Hi there. Happy Friday. Woohoo. So, uh, I would like to uh, tell you that this is the third installment of the MLA outline lesson. And remember, the first one has to do with the introductory paragraph, the second one has to do with the body, and the third one's the concluding part of the outline. So, I'm going to help you see what I'm looking at right here. All right, so again, there are three portions to the outline in general, and we're working on the concluding paragraph. So we started out talking about the introductory paragraph and then the body of the outline, and then today is the concluding paragraph. In a review, the introductory paragraph has a hook sentence first, then a mention of the three subtopics next, followed by the thesis statement. And then we looked at, at the body of the outline and we talked about the subtopic. You create a topic sentence regarding that. And then you have three examples and their source numbers. And you do that for every subtopic. So the concluding paragraph, as was mentioned a couple, uh, not two, quite two weeks ago, when I introduced the whole thing with a paragraph. Uh, I mean, the outline is that the first sentence in the concluding paragraph is your restated thesis statement. The next one is what you proved and the third is how you proved it. So that may sound a little familiar to you from that lesson. Let's start with that thesis statement. What you're gonna do is restate the thesis statement that you said in the introductory paragraph. So we'll go back to that. The introductory paragraph I came up with in another lesson was, the Boston Tea Party was a huge effort to demonstrate that the colonists were weary of the British control over their lives. Well, let's put that a different way. That's all we're doing. In order to demonstrate the colonists were no longer accepting the British control by charging tea tax, the colonists determined a sort of tea party was in order. All right, it is restated. So we put the restated thesis statement in the concluding paragraph first. The next sentence out of three will be what was proven. Well, what did we prove? We proved in the paper that the tea dump from the three ships proved to gain the attention of the British who assumed the colonists were unaware that the tea tax was already paid for. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is prove, show how I proved that Okay, how I proved it to be true was that the British underestimated the colonists. In a form of vengeance, the British government charged Boston with a large bill for damage done to the tea industry, causing the town's economy to sink. Now, we look at the whole thing when we connect all three sentences together for the concluding paragraph. The restated th thesis, what was proved in the paper, how it was proved in the paper, and I start out with the first sentence. There's my restated thesis right here. Then I mentioned what I proved and then how it was proved. And this is a little easier way to see it. The yellow is the restated thesis right here. And that's the first one that is put in. In the green, what was proved in the paper is put secondly in the concluding paragraph. The teal is how it was proved in the paper. So that last sentence is put in teal. So those, it's real simple. Three sentences, just like the introductory paragraph has three sentences, the concluding paragraph has as well. All right, let's review. So what's the function of the first sentence in the concluding paragraph? Restating the thesis statement. All right, what is the second sentence in the concluding paragraph? Its function is to, do you remember? Tell what you proved. And the third sentence in the concluding paragraph tells how you proved it. Now, 
look at this, the concluding paragraph. These sentence functions below are the answers on your homework for today. It's a giveaway, guys. Restated thesis statement, followed by what you proved, followed by how you proved it. These things that are in gray are the answers that will go in the bottom of your worksheet that's attached today for today's homework. You're gonna see an entire copy of the outline. You're gonna tell that the concluding paragraph is in a larger font and it's in bold and it's italicized. So you can see it stand out among the, all the rest of the outline. And then you're gonna be asked, what are these three sentences in the concluding paragraph doing? What is their function? Well, the first one's restating the thesis statement. The second one is talking about what you proved. And the third is how you proved it. So those are the answers to the worksheet. You can't, can't get better than that. All right, so here is what the entire outline appears as. So you can see that the first and the last are already written paragraphs. This will be the second paragraph, third, fourth, and the fifth. And by the time you write your paper, it's really cool because all you're doing is copying the introductory paragraph and then you start writing the second paragraph about your first subtopic. Your next paragraph is about the second subtopic. The third paragraph is about your, no, oh, that's your fourth paragraph, yeah, is about your third subtopic. And then your last paragraph is already written. So you can see how writing out the MLA outline is huge. Because once you go from this step to actually writing a research paper, it's very, very easy. Everything's laid out for you. It's already organized. And take a look at these subtopics. The subtopic sentence is already written. So there's the first sentence of the next paragraph right there. And then you make sentences about the details. The next paragraph starts with this topic sentence right here. It's already done. You just have to make sentences with this. The next paragraph talking about the third subtopic, the topic sentence is already there. So that first sentence in that paragraph is ready to go. All you have to do is create sentences for those. So in essence, if you take a look, the only thing that's not written for the research paper is just the detail that you want, the, the details and the main details that you want to talk about inside your paragraphs, inside the body of your paper. Everything else is written. So if you add up all these sentences with the outline, you are halfway there. You're halfway to having the paper written and done. So that's why the MLA outline is so vastly important. All right, so again, today's assignment will allow you a chance to look at the outline and answer the questions regarding the concluding paragraph. So I will let you get off of here and just go ahead and take a minute and get that done. I know it's not due until Monday, but actually you don't wanna procrastinate this because on Monday you'll think, what was this about? I can't remember. Today, right now, you remember it. And so if you open up that document on Friday, on the Friday's part of the Google Classroom, it's right there. It'll say Friday. It'll say MLA, concluding paragraph, Friday, April 24th. So you just open that up, go down to the bottom, write and type right on top of that document because it's your copy. And then turn it in and you're all set. No more homework. All right more later.